Hi guys, it's Tim with Inflatable Office and Event Office, and I want to show you a new feature we just released uh, not too long ago called uh, conditional pricing or advanced pricing. Uh, so we used to do this uh, in our old UI, and we didn't bring it into the new one, and there was a purpose for that. We wanted to make it a lot better, so we have now done that. And it was a little bit of work to do it, and I'll kind of explain why. Um, one of the things that we're going to try to do here or that we are doing with it is using our filters to uh, help define when you want these prices to trigger. So um, one of the first steps to this is setting up a filter. And I've already set up one here for this example. Uh, I think a lot of times people are looking to make an adjustment to a price of an item based on the zip code. This is a pretty common thing that you see um, some of the big stores like Lowe's or Walmart doing as well. So you have to enter your zip code before you see the price and stuff like that. So I made this one here and you could obviously put, um, if you want to put more zip codes in, you do an or and, and you, you do, you know, another zip code. Um, and that's how you do it. So, uh, but I'm just going to put one in for now. I'm not going to save that. So we're going to go to our inventory here. I'm going to show you how to enter these prices. So just as an example here, I'm going to take this obstacle course. I don't have any conditional pricing set up on this account yet. So when I come down here, uh, you're going to see, uh, we have our normal price here. This is the name that we've given it. Uh, this is the, these are the parameters of the price. If I want to do conditional pricing on this, this is kind of the base price. Uh, what I do is I click over here on this link and it's going to flip the page here a little bit for me. And I'm going to see now my base price is set to this 700, which we know. Uh, and I can edit that if I want. I click that button there and it'll let me make the changes. And then I click down when I'm done. Remember, anything that's linked to this price would uh, get changed uh, if you do change it here. So... Um, now, because, uh, you know, you might have multiple units that price the same as this one. And so that's intentional. So when you go in here and change it, you don't want to have to do it for every unit. You change it one time and everything that's linked to that, because they're always priced that way, um, would, would, you know, obviously already be corrected. So, uh, but I want to show you here on this new section here, we have these rows here that are added. And you can say override or I can say add to it. So if I wanted to, and probably I think there's a really good reason to say that you would just add to the base price. Um, maybe you would do something like if the surface is gravel, we want to add $50 per hour to the price. Or if the, um, and you could do another one and say, and if the uh, delivery type is uh, staffed, uh, I want to add another $75 an hour or something like that. Um, and you could do that, and that would add to this base price as opposed to replacing it. Um, and you could change the way that works, too. So you could say maybe the, the base price is based on an hourly rate. Maybe the uh, surface cost is not $75, not $50 an hour. Maybe it's more like $50 for the day. Uh, and you can do that sort of thing um, if you want. Uh, for this example, to make it more clear, I'm going to just do override. So this... Uh, in this case, it's going to hit this. It's going to override the original one there. And I know I have a couple prices set up here. I'm just going to pick one that's in there. It doesn't make a lot of sense, the words there. But uh, we also let you pick an order here. So uh, the first one it hits with override price, we're going to kick out when we get to, if we're doing like add to, um, we're, I think it'll allow you to continue to go through the list and add all these prices on. But if it does hit one that says override, um, then that would trigger and it would stop. So that's why you're able to order these so that you make sure that um, you know what's most important to you occurs first. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Oh, and there we go. Here's this little error. It says, wait a minute, you, to use conditional pricing, leads autosave must be enabled. So I'm gonna go over to the general preferences, open that up, and we're gonna turn on the autosave. The autosave um, is something that we have to do because of the way we're we're using our filtering. Okay, so I've got that saved now. Should let me save this now. So there we go. We saved the item. Uh, the reason why uh, the auto save is important is because as you're making changes to a lead, we need to make sure that we're uh, saving that lead so that we can see if the filter triggers. And if the filter triggers, we can recommend a price update. So that's why it's like that. And in fact, um, this pricing works for people on your website too. So if they're entering in a delivery address. We start collecting that information, um, and I think that this is going to be a pretty cool thing we'll be able to do uh, as we start to put more forms on the website to kind of let people fill in more information, one little piece at a time. Uh, and then we track that, and we save it in like a hidden lead on your website, 
And then we're able to use this uh, whole conditional pricing to look at those fil look at those leads, filter through them, see if they match, and then appropriately show the right charge. So uh, applications, I think, will be things such as, you know, enter your zip code to see pricing, uh, and we'll be able to do some things like that here in the future. So um, let's go over and take a look at how it works on a lead. So I had my dev tools open here. Um, I'm going to close those. Uh, so we're going to look at this one here. And right now, uh, it has the 48-foot obstacle course on it. Uh, at $700, let's go down to the actual venue here. So we can see um, the, the zip code did not match what we entered in for our filter. So I'm going to go ahead and type in that zip code. And when I click out of here, we're going to watch down here. You can see we have this new button if you have autosave on, an undo button, uh, and this little drop down here. We can see autosave just kicked in. It's saving right now. It's already saved. And boom, right there is our, our message saying, look, we detected that we hit that, that, that because of that filter, we should only charge 200. You know, of course we would say change in that case. Um, this hasn't been saved yet. So that change has not been saved. We are now auto saving again and there it's saved. Uh, now your undo button will allow you to come in here and go back to a different time if you want. Now, once you manually save or once you close this, you would lose that ability to, to go backward. It's just uh, be aware of that. Uh, if we were to go down to the log, uh, you know, it might be somewhat helpful to see. Um, oh, it looks like my, 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 my little face here is getting in the way of this link. There we go. Um, so you can see here's all the auto saves that were done. So if you're looking to see like, well, which one do I want to go back to? You could kind of look through these and say, okay, that's the one. And I would go back to that, that time. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, because we're doing an auto save, we wanted to give you the ability to revert if you were just kind of messing around or you accidentally typed something in and you didn't really want it to be like that. Of course, like I said, you can always go back to the log, see what was changed, and then make the change manually. But we, we did give you this option for undo. So um, that's how it works. Um, the same sort of thing works on the website. So if someone's on your website, uh, I know right now one of the few things they can put in is the delivery address if they want to check uh, shipping cost. Uh, so, you know, if anything that you do that triggers on those values uh, would work. Um, I anticipate over uh, the next uh, year that we'll have a lot more options for you when it comes to that, uh, you know, as far as entering in additional values that you might want to capture uh, up front and, and adjust the pricing for. So thank you all. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you soon.